I'll uh, just kick off by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Chris Tompkins. Uh, I set up the uh, Proactive Health Unit uh, within AXA with a license to do things uh, a bit differently. And uh, now I don't know if it's because I'm doing things differently or I've been owned by a financial business too long, but I'm the only one in a jacket and tie now. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think actually the, the talks you had this morning are fantastic. In, I think we've been really armed with the arguments about uh, why well-being is important. Um, and uh, actually what we want to really talk about, uh, myself and Tiffany, is actually how. How can we actually make it happen? Um, so we did this last year um, with uh, Sanger Ben. There's a, a copy of the case study uh, on the AXA stand. Um, and uh, this is uh, with Volkswagen Financial Services, a very different business. Um, uh, much more sort of office-based and looking at uh, uh, the white-collar professionals. Um, but before we get into that, I guess I uh, just want to introduce a, a couple of concepts about how we uh, approach this space. Um, we're very conscious about the individual here. My own background is actually Unilever, and actually thinking about this as a consumer-centric challenge is, uh, is really important because... Uh, I think well-being is going to be individual, both at the employee level and at the company level. Ultimately, you're going to own your well-being strategy. The question is, is how can we collaborate together to actually make that a reality and deliver something very close to my heart, which is the better health outcomes. And it's those that are going to give that, that well-being that fuels business energy and performance. And there's a great virtuous circle here that we can capture which is uh, uh, we bring people in, we engage them with what we're doing. They then see the benefits of that. That breeds more engagement. It breeds advocates. And so the whole virtuous circle drives around. So this is a, a, a multi-component space. I think anyone saying they've got the whole of well-being wrapped up is probably missing something somewhere. I think, in fact, we're going to see the whole space of well-being evolve and change quite rapidly over the coming years. So uh, I think we're at the start of a journey here, but I think at the heart of this is the collaboration um, with yourselves, the employers, the partners, and the employees, understanding their changing and diverse needs. And uh, building that sort of culture of, of learning, responding, but I think at the heart of it, learning by doing and not getting a paralysis through analysis. If you're waiting for data, then nothing's going to happen. Whereas if we can get stuck in and start deploying wellbeing programs, get the data flowing, we'll learn and we'll improve. So I think an important part of that is actually uh, been enabled by, as Linda was saying earlier, about the, the, the impact of technology, digital platforms are enabling us to have that engagement on a broad basis with a big population very cost effectively and is creating data flows. And that then can enable us to really identify those people most in need and give them the kind of relevant solutions um, that are going to help them in terms of their individual performance, their well-being uh, and their health. And uh, just as give a sense of the, the, uh, the possibility here. I mean, we've been in this space for um, uh, over five years now, and this is sort of four years of data. What's particularly striking about um, all these lines, if I can just draw, draw your attention to the, that bunch of lines along the top and the bunch of lines along the bottom, I think this is um, <coughs> putting into uh, a picture Linda's point about the future of work. The bottom lines are those people engaged where we have mainly digital solutions and a light touch of human. Whereas the lines at the top are where we actually have a significant human component. There is a tremendous synergy when you can get the digital and the human components working closely together. So I'm delighted to say we're not all going to be turned into robots at this end. So uh, what I want to do is invite... Um, uh, Tiffany up the stage and uh, describe um, the experience of uh, Volkswagen Financial Services uh, in delivering wellbeing. Thanks, Chris. 
I'm Tiffany, I'm the Ward and Benefits Manager at Volkswagen Financial Services and I'm responsible for the wellbeing programme. As financial services companies go, we're probably not what you'd expect. We're diverse, we're different, we're warm and we're welcoming. This next slide just gives you an overview of what we are actually accountable for. So we coordinate the worldwide financial services activities of Volkswagen Group. We first opened in the UK in 1994 and we work with over 12 different brands including Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Bentley and Lamborghini. We have over 1,200 colleagues across four sites in, in the UK, Milton Keynes and Swindon and we finished eighth in the UK's best workplaces to work for in 2016, an achievement that we're all really proud of. Our commercial success is based on the skill and the dedication of our workforce. Milton Keynes is and continues to be a competitive recruitment market. We needed to be different, to stand out and go beyond expectations in order to attract and retain colleagues in the business. Our working environment is predominantly office-based, with only around 8% of our workforce in field-based roles. Historically, our wellbeing approach had been more aligned to a traditional reactive sick bay approach with providing help and assistance at the point it was needed. We face the same health concerns as many of you, musculoskeletal, mental health and general lifestyle, unhealthy eating habits and little exercise, all of which contributed to conditions resulting in high levels of absence. In 2013, we embarked on a design project for our new headquarters, and it gave us the opportunity to design our office space with our colleagues in mind. They were involved in every aspect, covering things as decor, catering, uh, refreshment areas, and of course, health and well-being. In 2015, we opened the doors to our new headquarters and opened our well-being centre in partnership with AXA PPP, and our Feel Supported campaign was launched. Our vision for this was to introduce a well-being programme which raised awareness and encouraged healthy behaviours was proactive, agile, and could adapt to the identified health risks using information that the Wellbeing Centre gathered. We also wanted this to contribute towards our culture of going beyond expectations and demonstrate our commitment to employee health and wellbeing. Importantly, we didn't want this to be the sole responsibility of those sat within HR. We wanted to equip our colleagues with the tools and the resources to enable them to take responsibility for their own wellbeing. All of this would help to create an energised, resilient and motivated workforce for today and for tomorrow. This vision connected to our strategy of going beyond expectations in all aspects for our colleagues, particularly our reward and benefits approach incorporating the wellbeing programme. Allowing our colleagues to feel supported is vital for our business. Our programme has evolved over the past three years and continues to do so. We made a decision to implement a fully integrated approach with AXA, funded by the company, to ensure that all of the services we offered complemented each other and provided a smooth transition from one service to the next. The Wellbeing Centre operates a year-round programme, often aligning campaigns with external focuses such as Love Your Heart Month and, and World Mental Health Day. Creating awareness of prevalent health issues without preaching actually helps employees to engage with the programme and resulting in positive health outcomes. The services offered through our wellbeing centre include wellbeing assessments, so blood glucose testing, cholesterol testing, blood pressure, company funded physio, occupational health support health and wellbeing education and support. They run a variety of seminars on topics such as back health, cancer awareness. They also run walking clubs and a weight management programme. There's also a variety of employee-sponsored services such as podiatry, reflexology, massage, and classes, yoga and pilates. And we've just introduced a, a HIT high intensity interval training. I think I've got that right. Um, during the first few months of operation, the centre actually picked up through wellbeing assessments that a number of our colleagues had high blood pressure, which would have otherwise gone unnoticed, so a referral to their GP was recommended. Through the wellbeing centre support or medication, all of those have been brought back down to safer levels. The insights gathered through the programmes, such as the wellbeing centre in person, the AXA Health Gateway, 
the EAP and the PMI and our Active Employee Forum are all used to help shape future initiatives. As I mentioned earlier, we collaborated with colleagues during the design stage of our new head office and made sure our physical environment included ergonomically designed workstations, quiet booths for those times when you really need to get your head down and focus on the task in hand, refreshment hubs fitted with pool tables, air hockey tables and funded refreshments, and also a quiet contemplation room where all colleagues could go to escape the hustle and bustle and relax and recharge during their working day. Mindful of our sedentary roles and the benefit on our overall health of practical, small, simple lifestyle changes, last year we introduced the VWFS Steps Challenge. This was just a bit of competition to get everybody up and moving more, and it really worked. We had over 30 teams taking part over four weeks, with the winning team walking a staggering 3.6 million steps. That equates to walking 1,800 miles. It went, really, went down really well with the business. Mental health is one of the most important issues in the workplace today, and it's estimated that one in six of us have experienced a common mental health problem in the past week. We wanted to be proactive and provide support to all colleagues and their line managers to help them feel comfortable and confident in talking about mental health matters. So we created our VWFS practical guide to looking after your mental health. It creates some quick, healthy tips, exercise more, relax more, and also a health line manager, a mental health line manager guide. We simply encouraged everybody to ask themselves or a colleague, how are you today? Early in 2017, we identified that over a third of our female workforce were over the age of 40, and that we could and should be doing more to support them. We arranged a menopause awareness seminar with a guest speaker who had also written books on the subject. The aim was to start breaking down the associated taboo. With one in four women experiencing severe symptoms, often lasting in excess of five years, it was clear the huge impact this was having on the workplace. The seminar was really well attended, and building on this success, we created a menopause working party. These people met on a monthly basis to share tips, hints, or simply take comfort in the fact that they weren't going through this on their own. Their own personal experiences are being used to help create a guide for our employees and for line managers to help them support members of their team who may be going through the menopause. We were also conscious that whilst we had a wealth of information available online, we also had a large a percentage of our population that was field-based and they were often feeling isolated. So we created on-the-road packs containing a selection of goodies, hot and cold water bottles, lunch bags, pedometers, along with a well-being passport to help them in their daily routine. This covered things such as how to sit correctly in the car, the importance of stretching and taking regular breaks, nutrition, organisation and also relaxation, mindful they're on the road often for a few hours each day, ensuring a good night's sleep and also managing their emotions whilst driving, not stressing because you're sitting in a traffic jam, but just turn the music on and take some deep breaths. Acts that are really embedded in our business, colleagues open up to them, allowing them to be responsive and swiftly act on feedback. They've also worked very closely with our on-site caterers to ensure that we have healthy options available in the restaurant daily. To ensure that we continue to deliver on our vision of going beyond expectations, we run a voluntary annual survey focusing solely on health and wellbeing programme. As you'll see, since launching in 2015, we've seen a huge shift in colleagues rating our services as excellent, which is fantastic for us. It shows our scheme is working. We also request open feedback during the survey on what colleagues would like to see introduced and what they enjoy most about the Wellbeing Centre. And we ensure that we respond openly to them, confirming when or how we'll look to introduce some of their suggestions or why this simply isn't practical or possible for an on-site provision such as on-site dental care or gym facilities. In 2016, we were extremely proud to be recognised as one of the best workplaces, all down to the input of our colleagues, with 88% saying VWFS is a great place to work. So how can we measure the engagement in our programme and evidence the success? 
Firstly, it's important to note that people are aware of our wellbeing facilities right from day one as part of their new joiner induction. And we have approximately 50 colleagues visiting the centre each month for an assessment, 85 for a massage and 50 for, for physiotherapy. We've also seen 100% of employees register through the AXA Health Gateway and we've been able to reduce our age, health age by 649 years over the past three years. All of this has played a huge part in creating an engaged and happy and motivated workforce. We've, we've delivered on our vision of going beyond expectations and will continue to do so. We're pleased to be joining AXA in their pledge to make corporate Britain 50,000 years younger by 2020. Through our dynamic programme and listening to the needs of our workforce, we aim to achieve 1,000 years younger by 2020. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed listening to a bit about our health and wellbeing programme at VWFS. Do we have time for questions? So I'll take the first one. It's what are the next steps for VWFS moving forward? So continue on the work that we've done in terms of mental health. This year we're looking to introduce mental health first aiders. We're also looking to introduce financial well-being for our employees. Other areas that we're looking to explore are the sandwich generation, which includes myself, where you've got upward dependent pressure and downward dependent pressure and how we can support those colleagues in the organisation, be that through agile working, uh, is one option. Right, I'll take the next one. So in terms of separate um, sites, um, certainly once you've got a digital platform, clearly you can reach remote workers, you can reach multiple sites. Uh, I think what gets particularly insight, uh, insightful then is when you start looking at things like risk profiles of sites, OH referral rates in different sites, and start getting that data combined, because then you can start looking at what are the different cultures and activities. So I think although you can have a, a coherent wellbeing programme across the entire business, looking at local enhancements and particularly as a focus uh, is, uh, is important. And uh, in terms of beyond the wellbeing centre, certainly um, we work with a, uh, we have a network of physiologists across the country, so actually supporting different sites, different locations is, is part of the model really. In terms of questions that we include in our health and wellbeing service, clearly we ask people to, to rate the service, share their own experiences. We've used the same set of questions year on year so that we can really draw an insight as to how, how our service is provided. And I think it's important to solicit that open feedback, to listen to the business, listen to our colleagues and see what it is that they want us to, to work with. Um, we've, we've pulled out things like, um, I think there's been... Some of the exercise classes has been based on their feedback, and we also liaise with the employee forum, who are very vocal in our business, and colleagues will go to them as well. Mm. So I, I, this is a fantastic question. What about the unwell who aren't opting into programmes like this? I can't agree with this enough, because I think a lot of well-being of the past has been more like an entertainment business, talking about things, doing health promotion, but doesn't deliver health outcomes. For me, a key part of any wellbeing programme is the actual ability to intervene, support and improve health. So in terms of um, uh, provision of health coaching, which can be done remotely so we can target all employees wherever they are, those kinds of solutions. Um, if those individuals know those kinds of uh, options are available, they will actually engage more. I mean, given the option, so you, you sort of, most people know how healthy they are. Do you want to go to a health assessment to tell you just how unhealthy you are? No. You don't want your nose robbed in it. But do you want to go through a process which is going to understand you and then take you on to a solution? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much.